Hey, hockey players, it's Coach John, director of the Chicago Horn Frogs, playing out of Chicago Park District's Morgan Park Sports Center. Hope everyone is doing well. In this week's virtual session, we're going to go over the most important piece of equipment outside of your skates, and that's your hockey stick, and a tutorial I'd like to call Hockey Stick 101. These are some of the things we're going to cover, uh, what I want to call our stick basics, and those are going to be stick material, stick sizes, stick flex, your stick curve, your stick lie, and when you ultimately choose a stick, the proper length for your stick. First thing we're going to talk about is stick material. Uh, there were three main materials used to create hockey sticks and make hockey sticks over the years and the first one was wood and fiberglass and then in the uh, 90s uh, late 80s early 90s they came up with aluminum uh, which is not used very much today aluminum sticks had an aluminum shaft and a, and a wooden blade um, Currently today, the majority of sticks are carbon fiber, um, which is a great material. It's actually very lightweight. Um, it's got really good flex, uh, and it actually helps people uh, have a better shot. Um, however, uh, the wood stick actually gives you a better feel when it comes to passing. So um, right now, I would say the two main choices would be carbon fiber or wood fiber, wood and fiberglass combination. Um, which one is best for you as a young hockey player? I think it really doesn't matter. Um, I think wood is certainly sufficient. Uh, and I think that uh, carbon fiber, even though it is expensive, can be helpful. However, I do believe and feel that wood helps most uh, young hockey players be able to better catch passes. And again, the other good part about a wooden stick, it's substantially cheaper than a carbon fiber stick. For you, so for you parents and hockey players who, uh, who are just starting out and you want to save a few dollars, I would say it's perfectly okay to choose a wood stick over carbon fiber. And then as you become better and uh, you get a little older, it's, it's, it's perfectly okay to then make the jump to a carbon fiber stick. So the next thing we're going to talk about is stick sizes. I have a lot of parents come up to me and say, hey, coach, uh, do I have the right size stick for my son or my daughter, uh, you know, as they're getting ready to get on the ice? And I can tell you I've seen a lot of times parents will take one of their old sticks and they will cut it way down. Um, not necessarily the thing you want to do. Um, obviously, stick shafts for an adult are much bigger. Um, so sticks come in four different sizes and the first size would be youth and obviously the length is much smaller um, it's much shorter and uh, the actual shaft in, in blade are, are quite a bit smaller as well um, the next step up and most hockey players who are actually playing on teams would probably use a junior size stick is youth players uh, generally ages 7 to 13 um, and then as they continue to get older and they get up to where they're peewees and bantams, they're probably going to move to an intermediate stick. Um, again, the shaft gets a little bit bigger, the blade gets a little bit longer, and that's ages, you know, roughly 11 to 14. And, and again, then as uh, you get into bantams and the midget hockey, which is 14 and over, um, you're going to move to a senior stick. Senior stick is obviously going to be longer. Again, the shaft is going to get a little bit bigger, um, and, and the blade's going to get as big, a little bit bigger as well. So parents, when you're getting your uh, players on the ice, make sure that they've got the right size stick uh, for their age. Talk about is probably one of the more important things um, outside of maybe stick length and that's stick flex. Um, stick flex is just how much a shaft bends under the pressure that's placed on it. So uh, as you put uh, weight into, uh, into your shot, it's gonna flex the stick, especially with the uh, with the newer uh, with the newer composite sh uh, shafts, um, so the lower the number means it's easier to flex. Uh, the higher the number, it's obviously harder to flex. So if you've got a kid out there, um, again, who would be using an adult stick and he's 10 years old, he's really not going to be able to flex that stick because he doesn't have the weight uh, to to be able to transfer it to actually flex that stick. Um, flex number should be roughly half your weight. Um, especially when you're young, I would say that's a great guideline to go with. You can see that I put a little uh, stick flex length chart there um, to kind of give people an idea of just what uh, what stick flex is recommended based on age and height and what length is recommended. Um, you know, but ultimately, as you get older, it's personal preference. Uh, I can tell you that I use a stick personally um, that has a lower flex. I prefer the stick to be what we call whippy. Uh, it allows you to get a quicker shot off. However, sometimes it can be a little hard to control just how high or low that uh, shot is going without a lot of practice. Um, if you're a defenseman, uh, you might like a sticker stick. 
a, a stiffer stick. Um, it will uh, give you more power sometimes when you're shooting. Um, you know, and, and the other thing to talk about that I that's not on here, but I do want to talk about is where the kick point is. So they've got a mid kick and a low kick. Low kick on, on these sticks uh, generally means that you're going to get a quicker shot off. Mid kick is more of an all around uh, uh, all around stick to be used. Um, so again, if if I were a parent buying a stick, I look for something that probably had a mid kick, uh, and I'd certainly make sure that it had the proper flex for uh, my child's size and age. I want to talk about is your stick curve. So uh, there's there's three predominant type of curves, and obviously there's some that fall in the middle. Uh, but there's a toe curve, uh, there's a mid curve, and there's a heel curve. So whenever you see on a stick, you'll see those names. You know the names of your favorite players, whether it's Ovechkin or Kane or uh, Taze, whoever that may be. Um, and that name usually denotes a particular curve. So uh, a toe curve is exactly what it sounds like. The the stick is uh, the, the blade of the stick is curved more at the toe. So that's used for lifting the puck quickly and actually helps uh, with shot speed. A lot of forwards actually prefer that type of uh, curve. Uh, your mid curve is kind of your journeyman, every man's curve. Um, it's good for stick handling. It's good for passing. Uh, it's actually good for shooting as well. And it's probably the most popular. And again, Patrick Kane, that Kane curve is actually a little bit more of a mid curve, uh, where a lot of times the Ovechkin curve, we talked about the toe curve is a toe curve. Um, uh, your heel curve is, would be the last curve. Now, the heel curve is good for slap shots. Uh, it's good for power. Defensemen usually prefer a heel curve. Um, looks a lot of times it can be like a nine iron. So um, it really just depends on uh, preference. Again, you know, there's nothing to say that you can't, uh, you know, be a forward and prefer a heel curve. It really does come down to personal preference. Uh, but, you know, you need to understand those curves when you're buying a stick uh, to make sure, especially for a young player who really doesn't understand what he does or doesn't like, you want to make sure uh, that they got a curve that's going to help them and benefit them. The next thing we're going to talk about here is stick lie. So uh, stick lie is probably the least talked about, and most misunderstood, most misunderstood thing about a hockey stick. Um, quite simply, uh, if you're uh, into geometry, uh, stick lie is the angle between the shaft and the uh, and the blade of the stick. Um, the lower the number, uh, the lower that angle. The higher the number, the higher that angle. Uh, most retail sticks, as I put here, I have a standard lie of five or stick, uh, five or six. Um, now, why would you uh, want to have the correct lie? So, if you've got the correct lie, depending on how you skate, um, you're going to have the majority of your blade touching the ice. If you have a lie that's too low and you skate upright, um, then your stick is going to be upright and the heel is going to be off uh, off the ice. If you have a lie that's too high and you skate very low, then the front of your blade is going to be off the ice and you're going to be missing passes. So, um, you know, if, if you skate low or you have a long stick, you're going to want to go with a lower lie. Um, if you have a shorter stick uh, or you skate rather upright, you're going to want to have a higher lie. So the most important thing we're going to talk about here is uh, the last thing uh, we're going to talk about is stick length. Um, proper stick length is crucial for young hockey players. Um, when you're cutting the stick, you'll see here, uh, you know, it, it, it should be at the tip of the nose, you know, when you're measuring to cut uh, it, it, if you're off skates. And if you're on skates, it should be at the tip of your chin. Um, you know, you can see here in the first, uh, in, the, in this little uh, illustration here, the first one, it's clearly too long. Uh, the second one, if you are on, uh, if you are on your feet, uh, that's where you want to be cutting. Uh, if uh, you're looking at the third illustration, that's going to be too short. So um, as a player progresses, he might actually prefer a longer or a shorter stick. You know, um, a shorter stick will allow for better stick handling. It will actually help with your shot. Um, and it will help uh, with uh, making and receiving passes a lot of times and keeping the, uh, um, keeping the puck close to you. Um, you know, so again, if you're a dangler, uh, you're going to want a short stick. If you're a guy who likes to snipe, you want to keep the puck close to you. You want to be able to stick handle around guys. You're going to want a short stick. If you're a defenseman, you're probably going to have a longer stick. They generally have the longest uh, stick on the ice. Um, you know, and the reason they have that is they want to be able to uh, reach. They want to be able to get in there and uh, make poke checks. Um, uh, 
they want to be able to strip pucks from guys. So they want to be able to intercept passes. That's really important. So uh, the other part of having a long stick is if done properly with a little practice, uh, it generally helps uh, defensemen with their slap shot. And, uh, you know, when they're getting the puck on the point, they want to take a slap shot. Having a longer stick can sometimes actually give them a harder shot. So again, moms and dads, uh, you know, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, remember when buying a stick, these are the things to look at. You know, you want to look at your stick length. You want to look at your stick flex. Um, you're not necessarily always going to see lie, but if you uh, make sure that it's the proper flex for your uh, player and you make sure it's the proper length, they're going to be successful on the ice. Uh, this is going to uh, conclude this week's virtual session. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please direct them to virtualfitness at mcfetridgesportscenter.net. And be sure to follow us on Facebook to be the first to know about news, promotions, and upcoming contests. Um, we're getting close to return here, guys, I hope. Uh, so everybody stay safe and healthy, and I hope to see you all on the ice soon.